Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Rohan, otherwise known as the Roshank Redemption, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to find every single bobblehead in Fallout 4. Quickly here though, before getting into the video, and I apologize if I sound petty in any way by saying this, but I put quite a bit of time into finding all these bobbleheads and into compiling this video together for you guys. So if you could do me a favor and drop me a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more Fallout 4 content, then I would really appreciate it and it would really help me out. Also, if you could do me a favor and share this video with your friends who are interested in Fallout 4 and just generally help me to get this video out there, then that would mean a lot to me as well. Alright, and with that, let's go ahead and get into this bobblehead tutorial, and I'm going to make this as easy as I possibly can for you guys by including both commentary as well as video titles detailing exactly what to do and where to go to get each bobblehead. Additionally, in the description, I will include links to the specific time in this video corresponding to each bobblehead, so be sure to check that out and click the links as appropriate. First up, we have the Strength bobblehead, and fortunately, Strength is not too bad. First, you'll need to find the Mass Fusion building, which is pretty much just directly northeast of Diamond City. If you just keep going in that direction, you'll reach it eventually. Once you discover the Mass Fusion building, you'll see some guards on the outside, so be sure to kill them and then enter. On the interior, you'll find a ton of enemies, so make sure that you're a reasonable level before entering here. I did this at level 15, and personally, it was pretty difficult, so I'd say around level 20 or so, and you should be good. Overall, the enemies aren't incredibly bad though, so take them all out and then navigate your way to the very top of the building. At the very top, you'll find an enemy in power armor, so be sure to take him out. Once you take him out, you'll see a statue on the wall, and the bobblehead will simply be right on top of the statue. Nice. Next up is the Perception Bobblehead, and fortunately this one's actually pretty easy to find. First you need to find the Museum of Freedom, which is pretty much just directly southeast of Vault 111, keep going in that direction and you will reach it pretty easily. Then navigate to the top room where you will see Preston Garvey, and on a desk in the back you will find the Perception Bobblehead. Third we have the Endurance Bobblehead, and unfortunately Endurance is a bit of a pain to find. First, you need to find Poseidon Energy, which is basically just located way to the southeast of Diamond City. Once you arrive at Poseidon Energy, if you have Master Lockpicking, then you can actually just enter through the front and pretty much bypass the entire lower level area, but if you do not have Master Lockpicking like I did in this video, then you'll have to go all the way around to the back and enter the Poseidon Energy sublevels. Inside the sublevels, you'll find quite a few high level enemies. I mostly found Mirelurks, Mirelurk Razor Claws to be specific, which are pretty high level, and I honestly struggled with them quite a bit at level 15. So I personally recommend that you be around level 20 or even 25 before doing this. You will also have to hack a few terminals along the way, so be prepared to do that. Overall, getting through the sublevels is not too difficult, it's more the enemies you have to face, so just keep ascending and you will eventually reach the main level. Once you've entered the main level, you'll be attacked by a ton of raiders, so first you're going to have to kill them, and unfortunately, this part is pretty difficult as well. I dare say even more difficult than the sublevels, so once again, I gotta emphasize here, you should be a reasonably high level before doing this, I recommend around level 20 or 25. Nonetheless, you'll want to take out all the raiders and then navigate to the second floor, where you'll find a boss of sorts named Cuddy. Once you take down the boss, you can find the bobblehead in a room nearby on a desk. Hell yeah. Next up we have Charisma, and just a warning here guys, this one is absolute hell. First you'll need to find Parsons Insane Asylum, which is located in the northeastern part of the Commonwealth. If you just go straight east from Vault 111, you will reach it. Make sure that you kill all of the guards at Parsons, and then you'll need to find a man named Edward Deegan, who's unfortunately very difficult to locate. He can be in one of four locations. The first possible location is the Colonial Tap House in Diamond City. The second possible location is the Dugout Inn, also in Diamond City. The next possible location is Good Neighbor, which is fairly close to Diamond City. If you just go northeast of Diamond City, you should be able to reach it pretty easily. Once you arrive in Good Neighbor, find a place called the Third Rail, and Deegan might be inside of there. The fourth and final location, which is where I found him, is Bunker Hill, and Bunker Hill is actually pretty close to Good Neighbor. If you just go directly north of Good Neighbor, then you will reach it. After meeting Edward Deegan, you will initiate a sequence of quests that involves meeting Deegan's boss whose name is Jack Kabat. 
Jack Kabot can be found at the Kabot house, which is not too difficult to find because the game gives you a quest marker on how to get there. At the Kabot house, you will meet Jack Kabot, who unfortunately is going to give you two more quests to do, and these two quests aren't too bad, but it's still a huge pain to go through all this just for one bobblehead. Alright, like I said, he's gonna give you two quests, and the first of these quests is actually not too hard to complete, but the second one is a little confusing, so I'm gonna walk you guys through it. This second quest is called Emojin Finds a Lover, and it involves finding Jack's little sister. The second you get this quest, I recommend that you go to Good Neighbor and enter the third rail, whose location I talked about before. Next, you want to talk to the Mr. Handy who's at the bar, and he will tell you to talk to Magnolia. Fortunately, Magnolia knows exactly where Emojin is. Magnolia will then direct you to the Charlesview Amphitheater, and Emojin can be found here. A quick note though, I highly recommend saving before you enter Charlesview yeah, Amphitheater be because Emojin's boyfriend is not going to let you take her unless you pass a persuasion option, so you can just save and Your keep reloading Jack's and keep sister. trying again. Alright, and once you have all of that done, Jackabot will finally let you into the asylum and you can go and pick up the bobblehead. A warning though, there will be quite a few enemies in there, so make sure that you're careful of that when you enter. Take the door in the northeast and the bobblehead will be found nice. right there. The intelligence bobblehead is next, and luckily this one is very easy. First you need to find Boston Public Library, which is located very close to Diamond City, just to the northeast. Okay, and sorry, but I gotta remark on this here, the Cryolator is just too epic, definitely one of my favorite weapons in Fallout 4. Nonetheless, you'll want to navigate to the entrance shown in the video, and there you'll have to pick a lock, so be ready with bobby pins. Once you enter, take an immediate left and go and grab the bobble from the back room. But just a warning, there will be a ton of protectorons and other enemies there, so be careful. You're going to have to take them down first before you can go and get the bobblehead. But once you do, it'll be very easy to find. Excellent. Agility is next, and this one's going to be fairly straightforward. First, find the wreckage of the FMS Northern Star, which is basically just a straight shot southeast from Diamond City. After this, all you need to do is find the very front of the ship, and the bobblehead is going to be right there. The ship does have two levels, there's a bomb level right here, and there's also a top level that you need to navigate through, but the path only leads in one direction, so overall if you just follow that path then you'll reach it no problem. Once you reach the very front of the ship, defeat all the enemies and the bobblehead will be at the very edge. Nice. Last of the special bobbleheads we have luck, and guys get ready for a pain in the ass. Just messing with you folks, this one's actually not too bad. Anyways, first you need to find Spectacle Island, which is actually very close to the FMS Northern Star. If you just go straight southeast of Diamond City or a little bit northeast from the FMS Northern Star, you'll find it pretty easily. Proceed to the southern tip of the island, and there you're going to find a green boat. On the green boat, first be sure to pick up the fat man is there, and then navigate to the second floor and you will find the bobblehead. As you can see, the bobblehead is wedged between two lockers there, so pick it up and you're done with the special bobbleheads. The barter bobblehead is fortunately another easy one. First you need to find Longneck Lukowski's cannery, or however the hell you pronounce that, which is located in the middle part of the Commonwealth all the way to the east. If you just go straight southeast from Vault 111, you should be able to reach it fairly easily. Go ahead and enter the cannery, and then just navigate to the back room, and the bobblehead will be right there. Fortunately, there are no enemies at all to fight. There's nothing special you have to do. Just go to the back room, take the bobblehead, and you're done. And there you have it, that's the Barter Bobblehead. Bingo. Big Guns is next on the list, and get ready for another tough one. First you need to find Vault 95, which isn't incredibly difficult to find. If you just go southwest from Diamond City, you should be able to reach it in a reasonable amount of time. The problem isn't fighting the vault so much as the enemies there. The enemies there are incredibly high leveled, and I died at least 15 or 20 times here because I was way under leveled. Do not be a moron like me and come here at level 15 because you will definitely have a rough go of it. I recommend at least level 20, probably level 25 if I'm being honest because there are a ton of high level enemies. There are a ton of assault trons which are just absolute hell to deal with. Anyways, once you're inside, it's actually somewhat difficult to find the bobblehead, but if you just follow the path shown in this video, it should be pretty easy. 
Alternatively, the bobblehead is found in the 11 quarters, so if you just follow the signs to reach the 11 quarters, then you will find it. Once you're at the shown location, the bobblehead will be on top of a radio, so just take it and you're done. Energy weapons is next, and this one is kinda hard, but kinda not at the same time, simply because it's actually a part of the main quest. First, you want to find Fort Hagen, which is just directly south of Vault 111. Enter Fort Hagen through the entrance shown, which is the bottom lower entrance. After you've entered, take the stairs to the very top floor, and on the top floor, if you search around, you'll find an elevator. The next thing you want to do is take this elevator down. The next part is pretty straightforward. Basically, all you have to do is follow the path straight until you reach the Fort Hagen Command Center. Enter the command center, and then the bobblehead can be found in a cafeteria between two fridges. Just a warning here, this bobblehead is actually kind of easy to miss because the cafeteria in which it's located doesn't really seem like an important room, so it's very easy to just skim over that. What I would recommend is just follow the path shown in this video and you will find the bobblehead, but if that doesn't work for you for whatever reason, then as you near the end of the command center, just search every area and you'll find the bobblehead no problem. As you can see, there it is, in the cafeteria between two fridges. Next up is explosives, and let me just say right off the bat that the enemies here are assholes. I don't think I've ever seen that many explosions in one area in my life. But anyways, first you're going to need to find Sogus Ironworks, which is located way to the southeast of Vault 111. Once inside the Ironworks, like I said, there are going to be a ton of enemies with a ton of explosives, so be prepared for that. As with before, I don't recommend coming in here until you're a reasonable level. I would recommend around level 20, because at level 17, doing this at level 17 was pretty difficult. Ignore the terminals and other side attractions and just keep going up until you're at the top level. Once you're at the top level, just go forward until you find the blast furnace and the bobblehead is going to be located inside there. Enter the blast furnace and you'll have to kill a pretty powerful enemy named Slag who is wearing power armor, but once you do that, the bobblehead will be right here on top of this fuse box. Bingo. Lockpicking is next, and to start this one off, you need to find Pikmin Gallery, which is located to the northeast of Diamond City at the tip of this little landmass here. Now, just a warning, the path to get to the bobblehead is slightly convoluted, so I'm going to show most of my gameplay and the path that I took to get there, just so you guys can pretty much mirror my footsteps and do exactly what I did, and you should be able to find the bobblehead. But the basic concept is, you want to follow the tunnels and keep descending until you find a man named Pikmin, and right next to him will be the lockpicking bobblehead. Oh, and also, be careful when you're navigating the tunnel, guys, because there will be quite a few enemies, and there are a couple of treacherous falls, so be sure to avoid those. After following the shown path and navigating to the final room, you will find Pikmin there and more importantly the bobblehead will be on the ground right next to a trash can. There we go. Medicine is next and this one is tough. First you need to find Vault 81 which is located just to the northwest of Diamond City. Make sure that you have some jet with you before coming because you're going to need that later on I'm in the quest. The well. Also, when you try and enter Vault 81, the Overseer is going to try and make you get three fusion cores as a sort of fee for entering, but what you can do is you can actually bypass doing this with a speech option, so I highly recommend that you save before trying to enter and then continually try that speech option until you pass, but if you really want to, you can go and get the three fusion cores. Right off the bat, you're going to want to find Bobby DeLuca and give him the jet that I was talking about just a second ago. And just a warning here, this place is incredibly convoluted and incredibly confusing, so I highly recommend that you just follow the path shown in this video and you will be able to find the bobblehead. Bobby DeLuca can be found at the reactor portion of the vault, and despite what Tina says, you definitely want to give him the jet. What if the overseer or Whitaker caught you? Cut me some slack. 
<clears throat> sure. Here you go. Uh huh. Just don't let Tina know. She'd be all. After getting paid for the drugs, you're going to want to find Dr. Forsyth and donate blood to him. Fortunately, the doctor's office is pretty close nearby, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find. Welcome, welcome. Okay, now this next part is very confusing. What you need to do, you need to fast travel to Sanctuary, sleep 24 hours, and then return back to Vault 81 and return to Dr. Forsyth. Now, I actually don't think it matters where you fast travel, but fast traveling to Sanctuary is what worked for me, so I recommend that you guys just go with that. Once you've done this, return and follow Bobby to the old Vault 81, which is pretty easy to find because the game just gives you a quest marker to get there. Fortunately, from here things get a little bit easier, because although the old vault is sort of convoluted, ultimately there's only one path to go, and if you just follow that path, you will eventually reach your destination. But just in case you guys do get lost, I decided to show the path that I took to get the bobblehead, so just follow that and you should be good. Another warning I have is that you will have to hack an advanced level terminal, so make sure that you have at least advanced level hacking or you have Nick Valentine with you who should be able to hack this terminal. After hacking the terminal, the final room will be nearby, so just enter that and the bobblehead will be right there. The melee bobblehead is next, and I hope you guys like super mutants because you're going to be fighting a ton of them. First, you need to find a place called Trinity Tower, which is fairly close to Diamond City, just a little bit to the northeast. Once you find Trinity Tower, just keep climbing up the tower until you reach the very top, and be warned because there will be a ton of super mutants, and I really do mean a ton. Make sure you bring tons of ammunition, tons of stim pack, and I also recommend a companion for sure. Also, anytime that you see an elevator in this place, be sure to take it because there are only two elevators, but you have to take them both. Overall, the path to get to the top is not too complicated. It's more the enemies you have to face along the way, but even then, they're not that tough. So overall, this bobblehead is really not that bad. At the topmost level, you'll find a super mutant boss who you definitely need to kill, and then you're going to want to loot his chest. Inside his chest, you'll find a key to the cell that contains the bobblehead. Search the cell and the bobblehead is in plain sight. Next up, we have the repair bobblehead, and you're going to want to start this one off by navigating to the Corvega assembly plant. This location is pretty much directly north of Diamond City, or southeast of Vault 111. Once you arrive at Corvega, you're going to want to navigate to the very topmost level and the bobblehead will be there. And there are multiple ways of getting to the top, but I highly recommend taking the path shown in this video because it is the shortest way. Once you get to the top, go to the very end of the catwalk, take the bobblehead, and you're done. There we go. Alright, science is up next, and to get science you need to first navigate to Vault 75, which is located well to the southeast of Vault 111. Now, finding the entrance to Vault 75 is a little bit confusing because the entrance is actually through a place called the Malden Middle School. So first you need to find the middle school, which is located very close to Vault 75, and then enter through the middle school basement. After you've entered, take an elevator down to the bottom floor of the vault, and unfortunately this is where things get confusing. Now I will say before getting into this that you guys should have quest markers to guide you and because of that I don't consider this bobblehead to be too difficult but it can get kind of confusing if you don't go about it correctly. 
Anyways, the first thing you need to do is follow the path in the video and find the lab access card reader, which is basically just one of those swipe thingies right next to a door. Once you find the card reader, which I point out right here, if you try and activate the card reader, then it will start you on a quest to go and obtain the ID card. And to complete this quest, you basically need to go and defeat an enemy with a plasma weapon, and he will have the ID card. After you complete that, come back and you will be able to enter through the door, and then follow the path in this video to find the bobblehead. I realize all this sounds a little bit confusing, but believe me, the second that you find the lab access card reader, you will have a ton of quest markers to go by, and things will be pretty easy from there. Perfect. Next up we have the small guns bobblehead and the first thing you need to do to get this one is to find Gunner's Plaza. Gunner's Plaza is located east of Vault 95 or directly south of Diamond City. After you find this location be sure to enter through the side door which is shown in this video. Then you'll want to navigate to the back room which is just around this giant metal sculpture in the middle of the bottom floor and take the elevator to the upper floor. Now don't let this video fool you because once you get to the top floor there will be a ton of enemies around here and they are also reasonably high level so I don't recommend coming in here until you're around level 20. You'll need to take out the enemies and then find their boss who's named Ryder. Kill Ryder and take the GNN recording room key from his corpse. Next, take the elevator back down to the bottom floor and find the GNN recording room, which isn't too far from the elevator. You pretty much want to go the opposite direction you came to get to the elevator and the GNN recording room should be right there. Now be careful when you enter because you have to fight a high level enemy named Captain West who's carrying a plasma weapon, but if you can defeat him, the bobblehead is right on the desk. Bingo. Let's go ahead and move on to the sneak bobblehead now, and to get the sneak bobblehead you need to first find Dunwich Borers. Dunwich Borers is located in the very northeastern part of the commonwealth. If you just go straight east from vault 111 then you will reach it eventually. Also, be careful of the enemies here because the second you come to Dunwich Borers, there will be a ton of raiders that will just carry out an all-out assault on you. So make sure that you're careful. I would bring a ton of stim packs, a ton of ammunition, and also a companion is always helpful. Once you've defeated all the enemies, go to the ground floor and follow the path shown in the video to enter the Dunwich Tunnels. The key here is to keep descending, to keep going down until you find the second to last room and the bobblehead will be there. If you're ever going up, then you're going the wrong way. You either want to be going forward or going downward. And once again, just a friendly reminder that the enemies here are pretty tough, so be prepared. As I said, you want to navigate to the second to last room and the sneak bobblehead will be right there. If you're fighting named ghouls, ghouls with human names, or if you see some sort of flashback then you've gone too far and you want to go back one room. The bobblehead is on top of a desk right next to the station 4 terminal. Perfect. The speech bobblehead is up next, and the first thing you need to do to get the speech bobblehead is to find Vault 114, which is located directly to the northeast of Diamond City. Now getting this bobblehead is actually overall pretty easy, simply because you already had to come to Vault 114 as part of the main quest, so if you haven't already picked it up, then you should be pretty familiar with this area. Anyways, what you'll want to do is enter the vault and then navigate to the overseer's office, which is not too hard to find because there are a ton of signs showing you where to go, but in case you guys do get lost, I've shown the entire path that I took to get to the overseer's office in this video.
Once you find the overseer's office, the bobblehead will simply be on the overseer's desk. Excellent. Lastly, we have the unarmed bobblehead. Unfortunately, this one is very easy. First, you need to find the Adam Katz garage, which is located way to the southeast of Diamond City. Once you're there, do not, I repeat, do not attack anyone because all the NPCs here are not hostile. If you attack them, they will attack you, so don't do that. But anyways, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab the bobblehead right off of the hood of one of the cars. Nice. Alright folks, and that is how to find every single bobblehead in Fallout 4, and holy crap did that take a long time, but I would say it's well worth it. It's well worth it for two reasons. First off, you can brag to your friends that you got all the bobbleheads, and secondly, the bonuses that you get from the bobbleheads are actually very good and very much appreciated, especially with a lack of skills in Fallout 4. But yeah guys, that is pretty much going to do it for me here. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed, be sure to drop me a like down below and subscribe for more Fallout 4 content in the future. Otherwise, I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.